In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Today we're celebrating Thursday of the fourth week of Lent. As we gather in God's presence, let us ask for mercy and healing in our lives. Lord Jesus, you heal a contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, he came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. We invoke your mercy in humble prayer, O Lord, that you may cause us, your servants, corrected by penance and schooled by good works, to persevere sincerely in your commands and come safely to the Paschal festivities. We ask this for our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading for the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once to your people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, for they have become depraved. They have soon turned aside from the way I pointed out to them, making for themselves a molten calf and worshiping it, sacrificing to it and crying out, This is your God, O Israel, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I see how stick neft stick I see how stiff necked this people is. Let me alone then that my wrath may blaze up against them to consume them. Then I will make you a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord his God, saying, Why, O Lord, should your wrath blaze up against your own people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, with such great power and with so strong a hand? Why should the Egyptians say, With evil intent he brought them out, that he might kill them in the mountains and exterminate them from the face of the earth. Let your blazing wrath die down. Relent in punishing your people. Remember your servants Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, and how you swore to them by your own self, saying, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and all this land that I promised I will give your descendants as their perpetual heritage. So the Lord relented in punishment he had threatened to inflict on his people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. Our fathers made a calf in Horeb and adored it with a, and adored a molten image. They exchanged their glory for the image of grass-eating bullock. Remember also, Lord, as you favor your people. They forgot the God who saved them, who had done great deeds in Egypt, wondrous deeds in the land of Ham, terrible things at the Red Sea. Remember also, Lord, as you favor your people. Then he spoke of exterminating them, but Moses, his chosen one, withstood him in the breach to turn back his destructive wrath. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Jews, If I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is not true. But there's another who testifies on my behalf, and I know that the testimony he gives on my behalf is true. You send emissaries to John, and he testifies to the truth. I do not accept human testimony, but I say this so that you may be saved. He was a burning and shining lamp, and for a while you were content to rejoice in his light. But I have testimony greater than John's. The works that the Father gave me to accomplish, these works that I perform testify on my behalf that the Father has sent me. Moreover, the Father who sent me has testified on my behalf. But you never heard his voice nor seen his form, and you do not have his word remaining in you because you do not believe in the one whom he has sent. 
You search the scriptures because you think you have eternal life through them. Even they testify on my behalf. But you do not want to come to me to have life. I do not accept human praise. Moreover, I know that you do not have the love of God in you. I came in the name of my Father, but you do not, do not accept me. Yet if another comes in his own name, you will accept him. How can you believe when you accept, uh, accept praise from another and do not seek the praise that comes from your only God? Do not think I will accuse you before the Father. The one who will accuse you is Moses, in whom you have placed your hope. For if you had believed Moses, you would have believed me, because he wrote about me. But if you do not believe his writings, how will you believe my words? The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus was not necessarily taking issue with the Jews because they didn't believe he was the Son of God. That disbelief wasn't unwarranted. It wasn't irrational. But the issue that Jesus has is that they are so certain that it's impossible that anyone would be the Son of God. That's the issue. They're not even open to possibilities. They're not even open to pursuing a deeper understanding of the truth. Their conviction is that they already have an absolute answer, and therefore they're not willing to listen to any evidence to the contrary, any other possible explanations. Jesus points out that Scripture, Old Testament, has prophecy about his coming that there would be one that would be like a son to God. Granted, could be metaphorical, might not be absolute. There's semantics of language. The same about a virgin giving birth to one who's going to lead the people. So although it's not a guarantee that Jesus is the son of God, it at least points to the possibility. And the Jews aren't willing to interpret it that way. They don't have an alternative explanation. They just don't believe that it points to perhaps of Jesus. Jesus performed signs, supernatural power to heal people, make water into wine, walk on the water. Now, our doubting Thomas would want to send in a CSA team to do an analysis and investigation. We can't do that. Is there possible other explanations? Is it possible that Jesus is doing magic tricks? It's possible, but again, it points to the, the possibility that it is true. Jesus drives out demons and who identify him as the Son of God. Is it possible that he's in conspiracy, that he was in league with these people who acted like they were possessed and he shows up and they identify him as the Christ? It's possible. But what will be the point? It certainly didn't convince anybody. Why put on an act? There's a voice from heaven identifies Jesus as my beloved son. Now the voice never identifies itself, but nobody has an alternative explanation as to where that voice came from, whose voice it was. Is it a possibility that they all had this collective hallucination to hear it? It's possible. All this adds up to be evidence that's inconclusive. It does not prove that Jesus is the Son of God. But what it does do is add up enough evidence to call into question or calls in the, the possibility that Jesus is the Son of God. His being the Son of God answers those mysteries as much as anything else. And the problem is that the Jews were not willing to consider any amount of evidence. They were so convinced that it was impossible that anyone would be the Son of God without even knowing exactly what that meant. What that was proof of is their stubbornness, their hardness of their heart, 
that their prejudices, their biases, their own opinions were so dominant in their minds that they were not even going to allow any normal process to explore the deeper truth, to explore the mystery, their uncertainty. This speaks to something in our culture today. There's a proliferation of crazy conspiracies out there. Now, conspiracies, in many cases, are not impossible. Aliens could come and do this, that, or the other thing, but it's highly unlikely, highly improbable. There's a much greater probability of some better plausible explanation that we may not see or understand. But the willingness for people to abandon the process of open investigation, to agree to work collaboratively with other people to sort out fact from fiction, to kind of get to a better sense of truth, to abandon all that and rather subscribe to conspiracies out of fear, prejudice, bias, and agendas is really indicative of a world that is really on its last legs. This is no longer about theology, about believing Jesus to be the Son of God. As important as that is, what Jesus identifies then and is very much alive today is an evil, a toxicity in our culture that will tear us apart. If we're not going to agree on a process by which we can sit down and sort fact from fiction and to delve into uncertainty and navigate it with a sense of process and calm, we're pretty much toast. It's going to perhaps take more than the Son of God to save us. Let us lift our hands and hearts to God as we bring our petitions to him. For the church during this Lenten season, may the Holy Spirit continue conforming our hearts to the life and love of Jesus Christ, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who shape public policy, may the Lord open their hearts to hear and respond in justice to the cries of those who's, who, with no voice, especially the unborn, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the terminally ill, may the peace of Christ enfold them in their time of suffering and grant them a holy and happy death, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all families, may God bless the sacred bonds and strength and strengthen their love for one another, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all who have died, may the angels come to greet them and lead them to the heavenly Jerusalem, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, you are powerful, all-powerful and all-loving. Look favorably upon our needs. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we receive this bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness, we receive this wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that what we offer in sacrifice may cleanse us in our frailty from every evil, and always grant us your protection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Lawrence, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. 
Behold, him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. May this sacrament we have received purify us, we pray, O Lord, and grant your servants freedom from all blame, that those bound by a guilty conscience may glory in the fullness of heavenly remedy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God.